It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's superhero slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we're reviewing Season 2 of Loki. Mike, it mm, wrapped finally. up this week. The same day Captain Marvel dropped, which we have a Captain mm. Marvel review as well. We are not, we don't have to focus on it here. We did a whole episode on it, but um, mm-hmm. two, two drops in one day. Uh, if you want a live action of your animated show, boy, you can get one because there are live action <laughs> adaptations for everyone right now, Mike. Your childhood is having realistic flesh tones before your very eyes mm-hmm. zoom in and look at the pores. Will you be disappointed or enthused? <laughs> we will, we'll talk about it later. Uh, Marvel moves a bunch of their movie dates, and that has mm-hmm. to mostly do with the a- actor strike and some other uh, tidbits. So we'll talk about that uh, at the end of the show and more. You know, usually at the the top of these uh, episodes, I usually just kind of like set the scene and the atmosphere for just like the the, the time of life right now. But I feel like I blew that all in our Captain Marvel yeah. uh, review intro where I was just like, oh, yeah, we're – Full on into fall, cozy times. We're going to talk about it's, a movie. So it, I would say I, we get a little more fall here uh, in, in the Midwest, right? You guys don't get as much, much color changing. No, just in the trees. Te- the temperature changes yeah. and maybe something I, will be on fire. I, I didn't tell you. I woke up this morning. Um, I was I was saying to my friends, uh, Patrick's this weekend. We played some board games. Uh, thank you, Patrick. I know you're listening. It was a great time. Um, Thirty degrees outside the house where I was this morning. Was not expecting chilly. That. Uh, yeah, you're over there like oh, 60 and I'm under a blanket. No, I'm like, we, we could use 30 degree temperatures because there is a freeway out here that has, um, that's elevated and the city often rents, uh, space underneath them for like storage of like, you know, uh-huh. like municipal things or maybe, uh, business adjacent things. Uh, so one part of the freeway had just an ungodly amount of wooden pallets under it and they caught on fire what? and it shut down like that part of the freeway the flames got so big and hot that they're they're, they're worried about the the structural safety of that portion of the freeway and like if that just goes down for like a couple days or a couple months it's going to be madness out here so uh the lesson here is don't store a bunch of flammable stuff under your highways like how dumb is that yeah well that's pretty stupid. Uh, I yes. agree with you there. So I don't think cold stops fires, but at least a little moisture. Maybe send a little moisture in your way um, to, to get that, that guy going. But, yeah, it's, it is a, the fall season. My wife uh, took this weekend the opportunity to put up our Christmas tree. So we, we are getting <laughs> there. It's fine. It, we have It is a huge tree, Mike. Uh, our living room has vaulted ceilings. Yeah, I think you've seen you some know, videos. You know, I'm willing so. to compromise with these uh, pre-Thanksgiving Christmas crazies. Uh, which I know listen to to the show. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And, and I and I and I love you all, but you're crazy. Yep. Uh, let's compromise. If you're going to put the tree up before American Thanksgiving, uh, at the very least, swap out the ornaments for like turkeys or pumpkins. Like mm-hmm. I think that's you know because it's I'm not saying pine trees don't exist before uh, Thanksgiving, but like make the I mean I think that would be fun. Top your tree with a turkey at least. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I'll let you. T- I'll let you take that new tradition. I, take it home. Take it to the head of the family. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I, I'm. I'm not a big Christmas celebration decoration kind of person. But uh, I was like, you know, we have a huge tree. I don't know when we're gonna have another weekend when we're home, and I don't want to be doing this on a weekday. So <laughs> if you want to put it up, go right ahead. Um, trees. Everything else is still Halloween, by the way. Uh, those decorations did not get put up yet, so we're, we've got some work to do. But um, it, it's 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 fun to have that up there. And I was uh, you know kind of talking with uh, a you know friend this weekend about you know um, Christmas Hallmark movies, right? Getting ready, getting my getting my Chris Flick server ready with a nice playlist or a live channel of. A Christmas mm-hmm. movie is 24-7 to get ready for people. But we have to get to Thanksgiving, and that means it's uh, planes, trains, and automobiles times a year, Mike. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but that's on my list to do it. Um, instead, you know, since me being traveling and watching, you know, Loki and Captain Marvel this week, you had some time to watch another movie here. And I, I can't tell if the spelling's correct or not, but I'm, I'm excited to to uh, hear more about this movie. Yeah, correct. As far as I assume, it is I correct. I saw it spelled E-R-I-A-N the other day, and I was like, huh. 
Well, either way, uh, I think that might be movie, a fighter. But yeah. the, the movie at the at the top of the show here that I watched this week after Halloween because uh, my brother was pestering me to watch it. And usually, when he's pestering me to watch a movie, that's kind of a, a sign of quality. So I went ahead and I tried to watch uh, Barbarian from mm-hmm. 2022, just last year, directed by um, Zach Krieger. Zach Krieger, which I was not really familiar with oh. him as a director, but he is from the troupe The Whitest Kids You Know, which yes. is kind of like a uh, millennial Gen X kind of uh, um, sketch comedy group. Yes. So I, I love this trend, though, where uh, people with a kind of comedy backgrounds are doing more like horror films. Uh, I feel like that um makes yeah. for good films because barbarian is a triumph i love this movie it's it's so amazing they they do so many clever things where whether you are kind of more sophisticated within watching horror movies or whether you're fresh or not they're kind of playing to you on two different levels you know the first act of the movie is all about whether this one character is or isn't a red herring there's really insightful and crazy flashbacks and forwards and it's just great overall the suspense is crazy and through the roof um the 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 film ends in this great like just awesome i don't want to spoil anything i don't want to give anything away um i i don't want to set up that there's some sort of like crazy mind-boggling twist because that's not exactly what's going on here but there but there it's it's a fun ride Go check out Barbarian. It's streaming at least right now on Max. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that'll change at some point in the future, uh, but uh, great recommendation. I'm glad my brother was uh, pestering me to check out uh, Barbarian. I would love to just talk about it on the podcast just over and over again uh, in detail because it, it has so many um, fun moments in it. Uh, yeah. But I got that all out of me because my uh, my wife uh, does not like scary movies. Uh, she cannot handle them, and I knew the second I started watching this movie, she wasn't oh, going to be able to handle that, it. It was it's a very realistic, <laughs> scary kind of movie too. Yeah, so. but but the but the the plotting is so interesting that I was just like, can I just tell you beat by beat everything that happens in the movie? Kind of like when I listen to a really interesting podcast and I just tell you everything that happened into it. And yeah, she told me even just her hearing it from me was giving her secondhand like scaries Mm -hmm. so uh i feel like go check out barbarian uh really really fun highly recommend it check it out let me know what you thought because i had a great time Chris, will, you need to go watch it. Chris, you watch this. You're I, like, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm way too. I even, you probably watched it on my server, didn't you? Because I, I downloaded this last year. So no, uh, no, yeah. I, did, I didn't. I watched it legally. Yeah, yeah, on I, well, the I down- Mac service that I pay for. Yeah, I downloaded it last year, so I, I, I'm familiar with it. I understand. I, I know the plots. I, I just don't. I'm not. I don't care to watch horror films. It's not my thing. So, um, but I will say I the other it. thing that's not in our show notes, Mike. That if you, if you are. Not wanting to dive into that, um, I forgot Scott Pilgrim's uh, Takes Off comes out to Netflix this week. Uh, the the anime is coming out on Friday. Oh yeah, that's right. We got to check that out because you reminded me. It, and this is it, it's not in our news, um, but the Netflix's what is it week? Not to dumb. It's the other Ge- one. Geek geeked week. Yeah, yeah. So the Rebel Moon trailer literally just dropped. We're not going to talk about it in the show, Mike, because I don't want to watch the trailer live. But um, <laughs> it, it, so the, you know, there's some other stuff still dropping out. But I forgot Scott Pilgrim comes out on Friday, so we we have that. But um, yeah, if you don't care, I'm just going to jump into our first news here. We, we, we've been on, on the mic for, for a long time with our Captain Marvel reviews, but the uh, actor strike, the SAG after a strike uh, is tentatively over with an agreement in place. Now, again, as we talked about with the writer strike, tentatively means it has to go to the members to be ratified, voted for and ratified before it's agreed. So this um, this is a good thing. Right. This is yes. a, this is great. Uh, I, I know immediately I think it was like what Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday when this came through. Um, like literally, uh, this is not any indication of, of it, but like Marvel was trying to push the actors out in front of people as soon as they could. It's like, mm-hmm. cause they, they didn't even do a red carpet for the Marvels, right? Because yeah. no one could go to it. So they were trying to push the actors out as like Thursdays and Fridays, um, simply because the movie was opening. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting because, uh, you know, just like any other person, you know, in the world, you follow celebrities on social media, right? 
And you kind of forgot that, you know, during the summer, they weren't promoting anything because all of a sudden, all of these celebrities were just posting all of these things that they had been working on or they did work on. I started following a lot of the actors from One Piece after I uh, watched that first season. And I was just, I totally was oblivious because like, why are none of these actors like tweeting or posting stories about their time on this show? Like it was great, very well received. I don't understand why they're also radio silent. But then yeah. I, then at the second this was over, I was getting all of this One Piece stuff behind the scenes content and all of my feeds. I was like, oh, ah, I'm an idiot. Yeah, because they couldn't promote it all this summer. Yeah, they, they couldn't do anything movie related. So they were, they're putting, I mean, I always enjoy the, the, the hot ones, right? Uh, with all the actors and we didn't get any hot ones for Marvel's. Uh, I think I think that oh, would have been great with some of that th stuff. That actually is really funny. If you look back at the most recent season of Hot Ones this summer, it's like all athletes yeah. <laughs> or, or musicians. musicians. There's, there, there's yeah. no actors in the lineup at all. Yeah, so uh, really, uh, really, really uh, glad. That, you know, I'm glad this is over. I'm glad they're getting what they need um, to, to be successful. I know the big hang-up has always been on AI likenesses, um, so it sounds like they, they've gotten a good deal to, to protect that from, from the, the artists uh, and actors involved. So, yeah. Um, Good for them. Hopefully we get to see some more stuff. With that, we're going to talk later in the show. A lot of studios started locking down dates again. They were like, all right, mm -hmm. actor strike over. We're going to put hard dates down because we now know when we can resume production on everything. And we'll talk about what that means later. But first and foremost, let's take a, a trip to a, a property, Mike, that um, people have been burned on before. But I think after the success of One Piece may now be happy for. And that's the live action Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender trailer mm -hmm. that came out. Uh, Mike, I've still not finished the show. I'm, I'm in book three still. Um, this might give me the push to finish it. Uh, so I might, might do that. So you watch this trailer. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it looks fantastic. It looks like things I've seen in the show. It gives me good vibes. The actors are, 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 are there. The effects are there. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, I would say cautiously optimistic. I And I would think anybody with a brain that loves the that loves the franchise as much as I do would be the same, right? He said, we've been burned by M. Night on the feature film, right? Uh, so, I mean, everything looks great. I, I've seen a lot of really cool, like, carousels on Instagram fan accounts of doing, like, shot-by-shot -shot comparisons from the trailer to the, uh, like, I want to say anime, but not anime. Because, uh, because, the animated show. Yeah, the animated. So, like, yeah, it, it looks great. Um I, it just it just all comes down to execution, right? I, I mean, visually, it looks like they got enough budget to match the fantasy world, so that's a good start. I I I didn't think um, the 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 brother who was what's the brother's name Sokka is that his mm -hmm. name? They they actually got him actually like looks just like the animated version, and he's like the most animated animated ver character in there, right? With his face and, and so I'm like, oh, they mm -hmm. nailed they nailed this guy's act yeah, casting as it, well. It, yeah, it is weird, like, looking at, like, a real human face, and I'm not familiar with the actor at all, but I just look at him and go, like, oh, yeah, you can definitely be goofy. Yeah. Like, it, like you have that goofy-looking face, so that's good. That everything... Momo freaked me out a little bit. Momo, if you're not familiar, is the, uh, the, the flying lemur that is in the animated one. I Just seeing it translated to real life was kind of nightmare fuel, but I think maybe once I see it in more context... Maybe I'll maybe I'll enjoy it a little bit more. It, it, it Appa kind of, is Appa's very imposing with all, yeah. all of the fur. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you think it, it kind of like puppetry to me a little bit? A puppetry like the 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 little dude. What's his name? Oh, I mean that that would be delightful. You know, uh, if we if we add a little bit more of that. But also like looking at this and also coming off of One Piece, I'm like, oh, this looks like the the care that went into One Piece feels like the care has been given into this as well. Yeah. And they this didn't does... whitewash all the actors like uh, Shyamalan yeah. did. So, Yeah, we, we are also kind of reaching this era, and this is all due to the competition in the streaming wars, is that you can finally start to adapt some of these really high fantasy things on a TV budget, even though like the the phrase and definition of TV budget doesn't is not really the same of what it used to be, right? Uh, uh, the thing that I am worried about, though, right, is, is it going to be good? And if it is, is it, are they even going to be able to finish it, right? Yeah. You know, they have this whole Avatar Studios that Paramount and Nickelodeon have whipped up, but it has, n I believe it has nothing to do with this live action. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like behind the scenes of like rumors and theories of kind of what happened because the original creators 
used to be attached to this, but then left over creative differences, but it's not clear what those creative differences were. And mm -hmm. I've actually seen rumors that go totally opposite directions of they left because they wanted to be faithful to their show and Netflix didn't want that. And I've seen it the other way where they wanted to go new and different directions and Netflix was like, it no, the animated show was successful. We just want you to make that again. So it the 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 rumors are not really substantiated the, in any different direction. I would say watching this and and knowing that I've seen the first two books, right? And this looks like the first book, if you will, mm -hmm. the first season. This looks exactly like what I've seen in the show. So I would say that second rumor sounds more realistic because I'm like, this doesn't look like there's any variation on anything I've seen. Like I'm like, yeah, I, I know that shot. I've seen this. I know kind of what they're referencing here. So. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, but it looks it looks amazing. I I, I yeah. keep going. I've got to pull up here. I'm going through a couple frames here. And there, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I hope it's good. I mean, the 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 true secret sauce to Avatar is the chemistry between all of the characters, and the bonding and growing that happens between all of them going on their adventure. I mean, the character arc of Zuko is legendary, right? The the way he transforms throughout the series is just is is just so amazing. So that's you know, one of the many things that they need to, um, that they yeah. need to nail on this it, adventure. So but, I, I'm looking at one scene. It looks like it's an earth bender kingdom. It was, um, Aang's friend when he was younger and he becomes like the crazy King. Boomy. Yeah. It looks like they're doing that, that in here as well. What his town. Cause I see like the, where they rode the things down the, like it, mm. it was on aqueduct, but it's like a, a, a ramp that goes down throughout yeah. the city. So it looks like they're in there. So things I see, I, I mean, I, again, I'm not the best person to, to qualify this, but as the general audience who they have to win over, I, I feel, I feel confident in this, Mike. I feel pretty good it's, about it. It's coming on quick too. I don't know if this was delayed at some point in time or uh, maybe it should have been out already, but I feel like this is coming out February 22nd. Like yes. I feel like that's soon. Like that's just right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, and and who knows? Again, I, maybe they filmed some of season two already, or, or something like that as well. And maybe they were like, "Well, we'll see what we can get done." Um, because the the thing I'm gonna hate about One Piece, and and probably this is like the time in between seasons, Netflix mm -hmm. doesn't do it quickly, right? Look at Stranger Things. Uh, I'm like, come on, hurry up! We need more content. Like, I want to get this done because obviously it's based on something that was already finished. So I would love to do that. But I think this is fantastic. I think this is great. So hopefully everyone else gets excited for it. In um, cautiously optimistic news, Mike, Legend of Zelda, Nintendo has officially announced a live action movie of Legend of Zelda coming after the huge success that was a Super Mario Brothers movie this year. They're diving finally into the Zelda IP, Mike. Um, the cautious comes from that um, Sony Pictures is producing this film and A.V. Arid is one of the main producers. Uh, getting his little hands in it. <laughs> so I... You know, you know, talking this out, Aviarid has done some horrible things, um, but he's also done some good things. He gave us like the first original, like the first Spider-Man, right? The Raimi Spider-Man. He uh, suggested the spot as the villain and into the in, across the Spider Verse as the second one. Um, but at the same time, he also ruined Spider-Man. So and other stuff. He helped. He helped with the MCU early on, right? He was yeah. part of that with Feige. So like, he's done good things. He's done bad things. Boy, this is very confusing. So yeah, I have very, very mixed feelings about this. I mean, I, I feel like having this animated would have been great. Like, imagine if they could have gone with maybe kind of an experimental art style, like they did with uh, Mutant Mayhem or Into the Spider Verse. <laughs> you know, take it from a slightly more mature angle and approach, which seems to be growing. You yeah. know, out there in the animation industry, that could have been Can amazing. Yeah, well, I'm going to go ahead and say here. So my, I like the, the anime. Like, what if it was animated over the real world? Like maybe Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer we watched last week. Yeah, like it, like you like know the characters gone, like, are like like animated, right? Because obviously, yeah, it could have the human been like very high fidelity or something. Like, there's a lot of things that they could have done with it. Um, so going straight live action, I feel like now you have to surpass this fantasy hurdle part of it right because yeah. one of the the really awesome things that animation does is it helps you perform this magic trick of engrossing people in a world in a fantasy world that you don't have to try mm -hmm. as hard to kind of establish right we're already kind of our guards are already down a little bit because we're watching it in a different medium so yeah let's just go on this like let's go on this fun hyrulean adventure right uh but 
also at the same time, like if it was animated, I definitely don't want it done by illumination, right? right? I want it taken with some serious because Zelda is a it's a dramatic well, story. This is not just like yeah. a Mario plumber jumping on a mushroom. And and Sony um, have had success lately with uh, The Last of Us, right? Uh, TV show, live mm-hmm. action. What was um? I, I feel like there was another movie, Gran Turismo. Uh, I don't think that counts, uh, but. Um, yeah, so this is this is very interesting that they're working with Sony Pictures. Wes Ball, who is directing Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, is why I brought this up, is going to direct this movie. So when you think they say live action, do you think maybe there is the opportunity it's live action world animated CG high CG characters? Well, I mean, even if it is, uh, you know, live action, everything encompassing the characters are going to be yeah. heavily visual effects, right? All of the all of the monsters basically are going to be Ganon. Ganon would have to be. Yeah, I, or like you have to like, I'm sure Ganon could be like a mixture. Like you could approach Ganon from the same kind of angle that you approach Thanos in a way, right? Too. Um, I I feel like once the the production of this gets rolling, everyone is going to be on the lookout for what is the angle of the story, right? Are we are we looking from the approach of Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, which is the most recent and most critically acclaimed? Or do you go more classic because it's the story that most people are familiar with and comfortable with and, you know, a little bit simpler of a jumping off point of just kind of like, you know, classic hero's journey. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I think you are right. Like this does not exist in a world where Mario doesn't come out before it and crushes it. Right. So I think that paves the way. Yeah. And and, and I'm glad it's not just another Mario style movie either like mm-hmm. if they were like hey we're gonna do animated zelda and it's done by illumination i would have been even probably less hyped if you will mm-hmm. so um i don't know we're gonna play we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna listen to it by ear uh if you look up west ball um the director he tweeted like 2015 he's like i will never ever get a direct you know a zelda movie but if i did you know here's what i would do and then here he is like six seven years later oh i gotta dig up that i gotta dig up that tweet (laughs) yeah yeah um i I saw um i i saw it come up this uh this this earlier this this week 13 years actually it was 13 years boy did i undersell that i Uh, found it (laughs) yeah so so yeah he was like uh the next big mocap avatar like movie should be the legend of zelda which made me think hey that would be a great idea Mm -hmm. so um i i think that's fun but anyway um Yes, Legend of Zelda movie announced Aviera producing cautiously optimistic going forward. Nintendo did is very precious with their IPs, so hopefully they crack that down. Uh, speaking of Sony, uh, Venom 3, Mike, has confirmed, uh, was the first movie, I think, to confirm a new release date after the actor strike uh, agreement of November 8th, 2024. I think uh, they might they, have been rolling the cameras a little bit on it before it, it shut they, down. So. They are. They're desperate to get that goo in our face, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tom Hardy's like, let's get on. I want to. I've heard. Get on so, else I've heard. seen everything official from like Venom Three more than I've seen the one trailer for Craven and anything about um, Madam Web movie, <laughs> uh, which I could see starting back. Like, you know what? Warner Brothers is doing this write-off thing for taxes. Do you think we can write off Madam Web and not put <laughs> it out there? But um, we'll see. But Venom Three, uh, the conclusion of the Venom saga. Hopefully, we get some more information um, on it coming out soon so we'll see see how that goes uh also in sony's world is uh, another ghostbusters movie the fourth canonical ghostbusters movie fifth if you include uh the uh lady ghostbusters well, i don't know how to differentiate it other than saying that even though that's not what it was about uh but we got our first trailer for ghostbusters um the uh frozen empire so uh, uh this was this was an interesting experience for me chris because uh i didn't watch the trailer when it premiered online it was in front of our screening of the marvels but i i didn't know yeah. so uh we're sitting in there and we're seeing like this storm coming in and these big icicles falling me and my we me and my wife kind of lean over to each other like oh awesome we're getting like another disaster movie this you know this has um mm-hmm. Uh, what's his name written all over it? That director that does all the disaster yeah, yeah. movies. I, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden I hear the Ecto one, uh, driving down the street. I was like, Oh man, it's just a ghostbusters movie. Yeah. So like I, I wanted like a day after tomorrow, like part two or something. Uh, but also po- important context. We say it on the show all the time. We're not really ghostbusters people. You uh-huh. know, we, we grew up it with, with it in our lives, but we don't, 
really particularly have so, a lot of nostalgia for it. So I was listening to someone else talk about this um, on, my, on my drive back. One of the, the interesting things they brought up is like Ghostbusters 1 and 2 are comedy films, right? With with a little bit of horror in there. But it's weird. The the no, There's no comedy shown in this trailer. Like there's no humor. It's really like the, there's like this hushed reverence about the film, right? Like, like oh, it's Ghostbusters. We got to be serious about it. But Ghostbusters was always a comedy in the first two, so it's mm. really weird. You even have Pat Oswalt, Kamel Nanjiani, and Paul Rudd in this. Comedians. And they're like, we can't tell a single joke in this trailer. Like, it's got to be very serious. Um, but, you know, one of the things I've also said that this is going to have, like, uh, what was it? The um, the next Ghostbusters, the animated show from the 80s or whatever, um, uh, vibes where it's, like, one big villain. And I'm like, at least it's not Zool again, right? Like, thank God it's not the same villain. For another Ghostbusters movie, I liked Afterlife. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know if you ever saw it or not, but I, I really enjoyed Afterlife. Um, so hopefully that this can do it. But hopefully they do it. You know, again, right? You know, it seems like there's old cast and new cast in the trailer, so we can see what's going on. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I thought the 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 title overall is kind of interesting, right? It kind of almost feels like they're adapting like a really popular like comic book arc you know Mm -hmm. like when we get these marvel movies like you know civil war or age of ultron right we're like oh it's based off a comic book but in kind of a franchise like ghostbusters you kind of expect them to be maybe following a more specific narrative with like a a, like with a a, a number two or number three after it so like frozen empire does seem it, kind of out of nowhere but refreshing I, I suppose yeah i thought they would be maybe lean more into it like a, a cold pun like like a, like a mm-hmm. like ghosts and cold puns because afterlife makes sense right like oh ghosts afterlife boom frozen empire doesn't really ring true doesn't really really not really doing it for me so um this comes out relatively quickly as well march 24th 2024 so we don't have to wait very long to watch it if you want to but i i am excited to dive into to this movie um with no literally like we said no expectations no real baggage kind of coming into it so um buckle up buckaroos we're gonna have a good time with that one uh also announced this week i think it's Lionsgate. maybe uh, uh one of the the heads heads higher ups was interviewed they're like yeah we're writing uh, another john wick movie and like four other spinoffs i'm like oh man that's that sucks <laughs> Like what, you, you're, you're about to milk this thing dry, aren't you guys? Yeah, I haven't heard a single person say anything about that streaming continental show mm-hmm. that came out. Like it made absolutely no cultural impact in any way. So, I mean, that's not the angle to go right there. Right. And I don't know if it was because it was on, I think it was on Peacock. I mean, I feel like you're just not going to get the audience size there, but a lot of these, uh, uh, streaming studios are selling their content off to be uh, repurposed like on Netflix. So I don't know, maybe when the continental eventually hits Netflix, you know, alongside of, you know, it gets yeah. the rights to the yeah, other Pe- John Wick movies. Maybe everything starts to pop off. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah no one's watching Peacock. Let's, let's all be honest here. Unless you're like just yeah. putting the office on repeat kind of thing. So you're not doing yeah. that. Um, I just pulled up real quick. It's sitting at 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb, which is really isn't too bad, I guess. But like, you know, no one's saying, "Hey, you need." I've never heard someone say, "You, hey, you have to watch this." Yeah, kind of deal. And I don't, and I don't really know what the current state of affairs is with Keanu Reeves and John Wick. I feel like I saw like a quote somewhere recently. I don't know if it was fact checked or I obviously didn't look into it because I need to practice more media literacy. But it was that he was begging to be killed at the end of the fourth movie because it not not like he was over it, but you know he's getting pounded by uh, flights of stairs every time he's yeah. in these movies so maybe he would like to maybe it, i've not heard not any, i've him. not heard anything about him saying no he doesn't want to do it i, I oh, okay. that, that and then we also have, well the other thing is i think the the big one is the ballerina movie right with um yeah that's still coming out i forgot yeah, about that june june of next year so uh we, we've got you know will ballerina set something up um it, it, it says it takes place between the events of john Wick three and four um, but like, you know, will that, can that, you know, will us, as we said, do spinoffs reinvigorate anything or do they do more damage than good? Right. So, I mean, uh, I, I would say narratively worldwide, there's still plenty of gas left, right? We have yeah. not seen the high table as it were. We've only seen kind of emissaries from the high table. Yeah. There's tons of 
little interesting pockets. The that world, this the world is great. Created. Yeah, like yeah. I would, I would take a video game in John Wick universe probably more than a movie. If I was going to be honest, like a oh, that would be cool. I saw a headline that they're doing like they're doing an anime on for it. I, I mean, just like all anime, you know, uh, spinoffs. It's it's never necessary to watch them. Just go look at half of Netflix's animated catalog. They're always adapting stuff to live action from anime. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, they are gonna milk it as much as they can. Yeah, sure. I don't. Uh, Untitled anime season is in development. Yep, uh, another another live action. This is the same thing. Another live action television series, potential stuff. But yeah, I think for right now I, we'll get to Ballerina, and if Ballerina is good, maybe we could look at John Wick Five. Right, like. Uh, four four was fun, uh, a great a great ending. But like you know, again, is it John Wick or is it another character in this universe? Right? Do we do they give it a name like the Monster Verse, kind of like Godzilla and King Kong kind of thing, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of go forward? Because there are some really good side characters in those movies they could focus on. So I don't know. We'll we'll keep you guys posted if anything else kind of kind of pops out of this. And in case you have uh, have forgotten, Mike, I I do frequently Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Is coming out uh, next month in December, and it's a two-hour, uh, four-minute runtime on this movie. So not not horrible, really overall in terms of length. Um, yeah, we had the we had the trailer before our uh, the Marvels yeah, screening. I, uh, like I don't know. I mean, fine. it uh, might be fun. I heard another trailer dropped over the weekend. Um, I've not had a chance to see anything yet. But um, with the actor strike was going on when I wrote the notes through the middle of the week, there have really been no promotions for this either, right? Like we talked about. Yeah, you know, we're gonna talk about the Marvel's box office. Like, you know, Jason Momoa is a big name, big guy, right? Like, you you want him out there doing stuff. You want him on your hot ones, Mike, doing eating wings, because you know mm -hmm. he, he's probably pretty fun. But like, how much promotion are we missing because they can't get the actors in to do this stuff too? So I I, I keep forgetting this thing happens because they just keep, they just play that one trailer. I'm like, well, let, let's see some more more stuff. But I, I I plan to watch more the next trailer and maybe see uh see if tickets are on sale eventually because. I will watch it for the show. We'll watch it for the show. But two hours and four minutes, that's a pretty good time. That's a pretty good time. Maybe they have a good popcorn vessel. Maybe that'll get me back involved, Mike. <laughs> that'll get me in there. Uh, moving on, Disney uh, Plus and the Hulu, the combined app, uh, is coming uh, March 2024, according to uh, Bob Iger on an earnings call this week, right? I believe it's an earnings call. Um, there is a beta coming in December for people who already have the bundle. So I do not. Maybe I think you do, right? You have both. Um, yes. So you might uh, be able recent, to... recently acquired the bundle. So yeah, I'm kind of curious functionally how that works. Like, are they just going to take the, the best of the best from Hulu and pull it into Disney plus, or are they literally trying to merge both catalogs hundred percent so they can phase out the second mm -hmm. app? I mean, Iger did say on his, um, on his quarterly earnings call, uh, that he does really like the, the robust ad system that has been built in the hulu um so i mean i don't see what kind of stops you from kind of like copy pasting that into disney plus you know i don't think you literally need hulu.com you know up and running well in order to the, use that but so i, I appreciate I, one app that would be nice well <laughs> so you're gonna so it's gonna be a split app and i'll tell you why because of the live tv mic and hulu that's why um, so when he talked about the ad tracking stuff, that's live TV ad tracking, not necessarily regular ad tracking. Um, because, uh, my, my job as a marketing person, I've, I've dabbled in the Hulu live TV app. It's very easy to use, which is scary. Um, but <laughs> like you can target, like if I, if I'm, I work for a local company, I want to put ads in my market. I can put the zip codes or area I want to focus on and track the number of views and content. So he, he is right. He's very powerful, but I still think due to the live Hulu live TV, like there will never be Disney plus live TV, right? It'll be Hulu live TV um, until probably maybe 2025 where I'm wrong and everyone's merged together. But I, I think that's what we're going to get. But if you get that beta mic, I want to know, I want to, I want to do some walkthroughs with you, see how it works. All right. I'll let you know. He also made a shot across the bow at Netflix uh, or Warner brothers saying that they will not be licensing, licensing their core content to Netflix, uh, in lieu of um, like the Justice League movies, uh, the Snyderverse stuff coming to Netflix last week, uh, which is like so funny because that's either that's either Zaslav saying, "Oh, I will absolutely sell my core content to anybody because we need money," and their financial earnings, I believe, were either the day before or the same day as Disney, and the the market took a totally different approach to Zaslav's earnings uh, because they tanked. 
yeah. after their call. So Zaslav is either saying, I will do whatever it takes to make some money, or he's saying that the Snyderverse movies are not core so, content, and he does not think they are a unique I, selling proposition. That, that's, I, there's, there's more There's more than just the Snyderverse stuff. I just use a sense of film for the show. But that also kind of goes along with um, that, that they are making stupid decisions over there because of that Wiley Coyote Acme movie that was uh, oh, yeah. scrapped. Um, mm-hmm. Written or co-written and produced by James Gunn, who's running their DC Studios, Mike. Uh, and they still scrapped it. So it looks like no matter how much weight you think you have over there, they will cancel literally anything. Mm-hmm. Um, despite that movie doing positive test screenings and being, I think, was it 99% done, I expect that to leak online. Like, you think we're going to leak of the Coyote? Why the Coyote be, Acme movie? That would that would be nice. I mean, hopefully somebody's got it on a jump drive somewhere. Well, some, well I, I think this one, yeah, because uh, people like the composer shared music. The director was talking about it. So um, it's just... Warner Brothers is really driving away a lot of people right now. Um, so we'll see if anyone actually goes to work for them going going forward. Uh, we're going to shift into Marvel uh, for the rest of the show. Let's talk about What If uh, Season 2 has been confirmed for a holiday uh, 2023 release on Disney+. Plus. Mike, I don't have the dates, but we kind of guessed probably around Christmas-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, was the last, last What If, was, was it a binge model as well? I can't remember. Uh yes I no I, no, I don't, I don't think it was I don't think they've done any binge over there um it, it's upcoming so hopefully maybe maybe it'll be a binge model because I'm not waiting nine weeks to watch what if episodes Mike I don't care mm-hmm. enough about the show um to be completely honest uh it's they're fun if they if they're they're different but I just don't care enough to watch them all at once so hopefully we get a, a nice drop on Disney Plus for the holiday nice little nice little what if package Mike on our doorsteps. Uh, and now that the uh, actor strikes are over, uh, rumor is that casting on Fantastic Four will be announced as early as this week, this coming week. Oh man! So this uh, this this news uh, a little bit threw me off guard because I was on uh, Twitter and I saw Fantastic Four trending on Thursday night before I went to Captain Marvel. So I just like I kept looking around like every corner. I was like, "Where's the Fantastic Four like cameo or Easter egg?" and uh, so that was a, a little uh, detrimental to my uh, viewing experience, but um, yeah, I guess the Fantastic Four got to pop up at some point in time, right? Yes, and uh, the current uh, we, we've talked about you know the actors playing Susan Storm, and Johnny Storm, but the currently uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is rumored for Reed Richards as a frontrunner, um, despite him being a an actor in Far From Home. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's not like it's uh, unfounded to you know have an yeah. actor play another character in the mcu yep. um but this could theoretically if i had to stretch and make a headline out of it could hint at the idea that the fantastic four are indeed coming from another universe because mm-hmm. then you know you would just you know write it yeah. off that way right yeah i also think uh, if you if you 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 trim up jake gyllenhaal's hair give him the great temples and make him less of a sleazeball he could probably play a pretty different character that looks a little way different kind of thing so mm-hmm. there's an opportunity here i i'm excited for some announcements i know they are they are filming i thought now uh, hopefully i you know i don't know if they'd ever put on an earnings call mike but i was hoping maybe they would have done that last week but um very excited to see if they what they do with any fantastic four news um and if they they want to do that deadpool has a new release date mike of july 26th 2024 of next summer so it's pushed back just two months from May to July, uh, maybe two and a half. Um, but as as we talked at the top of the show, the strike, the actor strike is over, right? So mm-hmm. everyone took essentially. My guess is everything they've gotten filmed on their their shooting scripts or shooting schedules, and just said, if we start in two weeks, where are we going to land for for uh, the movie, right? Um, so it sounds like they're very confident in Deadpool being done uh, late summer. I think that's a great summer date for Deadpool. I think that'll be fun. Um, yeah. And uh, on top of this, in case you're a dog fan, you can go into our show notes and see that Dogpool is confirmed for the movie via Ryan Reynolds. And they got a little, um, I don't know what type of dog this is. but he It's looks, a ratty little dog. I don't know dog yeah, breeds either. <laughs> he, his tongue's sticking out of the side. He's obviously been, you know, overbred for something. But he, they have a little dog pool. Uh, it looks like uh, confirmed for the movie that they're working on. He's sitting on a, a, a car with broken glass. So it looks like we're getting a dog pool variant in this movie, Mike. Um, I think that's fun. I think that's a little fun mm-hmm. thing from Ryan Reynolds. 
And um, before we jump into other news, Deadpool 3 is now the only Marvel movie in 2024, Mike. We are going from yeah, that... three a year to one a year next year. I mean, that's big. Uh, we were just talking about that financial earnings call with Iger. Uh, he reiterated things that he said earlier in the year. That is, it is about quality over quantity moving forward. Um, he hinted at that the kind of the fixing phase of his uh, return as CEO was not necessarily over, but now it's all about we're done fixing and now it's time to start building. So I guess now that he's got his house in order, you know, he Airbnb'd it to uh, Chapek and he uh, tore all the paintings off the wall and flipped the couches. So yeah. he's got to put all those frames back up and put the furniture and, in the back right order. So now he's like, all right, now I can, now I can start to fix the content. So, so I will so say, I, I, I'm going to say Deadpool is, I, I'm a little ask is, I would say is not um, subject to that statement. I think they already have the quality, the, like an extra two months, essentially shorter than the actor strike as what they're pushing this movie. I don't think this movie was in trouble, right? I feel. Oh yeah. This. I don't think, the, the, yeah, I don't think so, it has anything to do with but, Deadpool. Right. I think it has to do with all of the other movies. Right. So, 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 so we'll talk. So, so July 26th. So everything else was pushed into 2025, which this is where I pause for concern, Mike, because now we have four movies in 2025 rather than we have one in 2023 and four in 2025. So, uh, I, some of these may shift. Um, fantastic Four is the only other movie that we don't have here. So it may, it may shift as well. Um, but we're going to talk about Captain America Brave New World uh, coming out now February 14th, 2025. So this has been pushed back, um, I, I mean, since the, the pandemic and everything, se- several years now. Uh, so we are over a year and um, like three months, four months from from Captain America Brave New World. And um, this is... Uh, this, this was announced, and then like a day later, uh, the Jeff Snyder on the episode of The Hot Mic says the latest Captain America adventure did not go over particularly well in test screenings, and apparently three key sequences have been cut, and extensive reshoots are planned from January until May of June of next year. Wow. So it sounds so that, like they're retooling this quite a bit. Yeah, that is definitely more than just kind of the uh, scheduled reshoots that we say every movie has mm-hmm. all of the time. We, yeah. we bring that up all the time. Three, three, go through research like so, but like two is, months this, is, is about normal i think is what they say like five to six months is like a whole whole different change yeah this is this is extensive right and also a pivotal character right i mean the it, i would say the heart and soul of those um first three phases of marvel was either piggy uh, flopping back and forth either between tony stark or captain america right yeah so if if, if you're relaunching this character i guess outside of disney plus where you know we got to see him a little bit at the end of falcon and soldier like you you gotta you're building a franchise here this is not just this can't just be a one-off movie and and you know knowing that what we know from the casting, you, you have Harrison Ford in here. You, you're bringing back uh-huh. Tim Blake Nelson from The Incredible Hulk. Um, you know rumors online uh, from last year say it's going to deal with the the Eternal stuff. I'm like the the what is it the Eternal coming out of the ocean? Like you the the rumors and then the, the the facts are like heavy on this movie. So how do you make a good movie with all of this, right? And I think we've even said on the show Anthony and Mackney, he's not for us. So hopefully everyone else is good enough to carry this movie. Uh, and I always feel so weird saying it too, because like Anthony Mackie has done, he has done nothing to me. Yep. Uh, not unlike um, who played Iron Fist, Finn Jones. Is it yeah, like? Yeah. Uh, so like I don't know. Like sometimes like just like an like an actor just on screen just like does not vibe with you in any particular way. Like I can't exp- explain it. Like I'm sure. Yeah. Like things are fine, is, you know, behind the screen. He has been like, great as a sub, like a, like a secondary character. Yeah, in the a Captain supporting Raider. character. Yes, but as a lead character, I, he's got he's got he's got range. He's a good actor, but I don't I don't I don't dig it. I just don't dig him in that. So like, I I agree with you, and it's nothing it's nothing personal. I he's he's yeah. I mean I'm sure he's a lovely gentleman and will probably yeah. do a great job. But I you can't we you can either like I always say this, you can remove an actor. From the the art, from the artist, or, or you can't. This is one where I can't. I just can't do it, and that's that's a flaw. It's funny because 
feel like I always couch my statements about him like I'm going to run into him yeah. at some point in time and, and he would also know my uh He's pre-established to this show, thoughts yeah. On it. yeah, it's like that's not going to happen, yeah. but you know, just just in case, I don't know. Yeah. Be careful. So, yep. Yeah. But Captain America Brave will sound like it's getting retooled. Um next up Thunderbolts uh, moved to July of 2025. Uh, this movie has not even been filmed yet, so I think this is just a production thing, Mike. Like, no, no other news has come out about this movie, so I think we're fine. Yeah. But um, I mean, that's good though because that means this is going to fall under the cone of kind of like the new Disney Marvel strategy, so yeah. we can really, Ho- hopefully, see some. It'll be a hundred percent non non JPEG, uh, yeah, crafted. Now, I will say, I think they're also keeping this date because something in Brave New World has to spin into this movie. Like they they are marrying these two movies no matter what we do here, so mm-hmm. like I I think Captain America: Brave New World with Thunderbolt Ross played by Harrison Ford is going to roll into this movie somehow. Because well, also name, not to mention Thunderbolt, not to mention um, uh, Elaine from The Office. I can't remember uh, Julie yeah, yeah. Dreyfus. You know she was she introduced in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, so you do have that crossover there as well. And also every, I feel like I have, we have to have like an asterisk of every time, like we are blaming Chapek for something. I feel like we're almost more just like placing blame on just the era and the time in general, mm-hmm. because I don't think just one person, you know, has yeah. the power. The to regime. Destroy. It's a regime. Yeah. If yeah, you will. Re- yeah. In general, but um, yeah. I don't care. I'll, I'll, he, he's <laughs> He's like a rich, wealthy executive and has to work him for the rest of his life. I, yeah. I don't have to feel bad. For the him. horse is dead. We know it, but we're going to keep, keep beating it. Believe us. Yeah. Like, um, uh, also, uh, Blade. Blade has been uh, pushed back to November 7th, 2025. This is also just in the same production line. Like These movies were always in this order, um, and now they're just confirmed to be in this order again uh, for, for November. So um, hopefully we will actually get to see a Blade movie, Mike possibly hopefully (laughs) i I mean i eventually i would love to get something tangible out of this film because every time uh anyone has to talk about the movie in an article it's just always a a screenshot of um of his character from like a battle Battle angel yeah the 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 glasses just like we uh, this is the one time where we need like the the photoshop artists or even the ai bros to really just crank out the image generation I just need something else visually different than the him in the sunglasses. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing. I'm like, everyone's like, "Oh, new Blade photo." I'm like, "No, it's not. It is not from that." And then that's he'll probably look way different. Even like, I hope he does. So, um, yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, on Thursday, uh, the Marvels release in theaters. Uh, and uh, you know, we we did a whole review episode on. It, so I don't I don't want to beat this with a dead horse because we got to talk about Lo- Loki season two, right? So, um, for, for lack of a better term, uh, it's, it's not doing well at the box office, but we put a bunch of asterisks in our review episode, which I'm going to link here in the show notes, uh, that you guys can listen to about, you know, it's not just because the movie's bad. It's not because, you know, um, there's a vocal minority out there. There are tons of things going on. Actor strike economy, um, people, um, you know, last time we saw Nick Fury was secret invasion. People are just kind of, I'm over the, you know, being burned on Marvel films. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. I had a really good time. I thought it was a refreshing film. Uh, and I, I would highly, I would highly, I would just recommend it to anyone who's like, should I go see it? I'd say, yes, you should go see this movie. I think you'll have a lovely event there because it is the most, as I said to, you know, to Mike, the most comic book ever brought to life in a movie. Like it's very much, if you, you're like, if you put it in a comic book form, it would be perfect. Like just flipping through the pages, having a good time uh, with, with the, the things, the, the actors are super strong. Uh, again, everyone, everyone I've seen, everyone I've, I've not heard anyone fault. I'm in Volani's Miss Marvel at, at all. Mike, like everywhere I've read as the, like, she's an absolute treasure in this movie. And, and I think we both agree with that. Um, so a- absolutely agreed. Mike, do you want to give your, uh, s- you know, quick, uh, speed review of this? Yeah. Kamala Khan, easily my favorite part of this film by a mile. She just brings so much energy and cheer and just the the feelings that we all used to have when we were watching those early phases of Marvel, when we see our favorite heroes on the screen, she brings that energy that we desperately want to recapture when we see and meet our favorite heroes. Uh, the 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 personal dyna- dynamics and the emotional stakes of the characters are by far the most successful part of the movie, and then a lot of the the plotting and like technical drivers that are moving the characters forward could use a little bit of a 
polish and a cleanup. But overall, I had a good time watching the film. Uh, I, we don't traditionally like really officially rank any of the Marvel movies that yeah. re- the, the, we review, but I would say this falls pretty safely in the middle of the pack. Which Chris, you reminded me, is like thirty movies. Yeah, it's like so, thirty-three you know, movies. At I point. would say, you know, if you're in the middle, maybe towards like the 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 top half of it, the the cream, I would say that's per, that you're you're in a good spot. It is again. I think um, out of the last five Marvel movies, it's probably right again, right in the middle. Like Guardians, Black Panther two is really hard to rate because I'm like I don't know how this fits in here because it's, it's such a heavy movie and like mm-hmm. loss and emotion. I'm like it's pretty good. Uh, right there and then uh, below it are Ant-Man and Thor Love and Thunder like it's better than those movies so second best movie this year uh, third out of the last five Marvel movies pretty pretty easy to say so yeah pretty solid so like uh, we were saying we can we can pretty easily recommend this one hopefully box office rebounds a little bit in some way Um, Mm. I honestly would be surprised if we see some sort of sequel like a third installment Mm -hmm. i feel like especially after the the box office reception i don't this is definitely not the last we see of captain marvel Mm -hmm. but or the or or the other characters yeah it it is kind of hard to imagine you know captain marvel you know they might team her up in a different conglomeration right and we you know well i think i think that goes back to all the marvel things like we ha- we only have so many dates and so many movies and so many characters if you want to introduce new ones like fantastic four and x-men you're going to do that and you're not going to get a captain marvel 3 but if captain marvel the marvels made a billion dollars they would really shift that around pretty quick um mm-hmm. but i i think i don't think there's a whole cutout for for captain marvel 3 unless they do say hey you need you know we're going to give you a swan song and we're going to go all out kind of thing thor ragnarok shouldn't have been a thing right thor 3 should not have been a movie based on Thor. Thor one good. Thor uh, Dark World sucks, but like Ragnarok came out on a good note. So maybe maybe they could find a way to maybe take the budget down, make it a medium budget film, and give her a swan song if you want to. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So let's go ahead, Mike. If you're good, let's jump into uh, Loki season two review. Um, Finally. We, so so <laughs> six episodes um, have come and gone. Six weeks. Um, we haven't really talked about it, you know, off the air either, much either. So we'll do that. I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, from from now, uh, full full spoilers. Um, oh yeah. Because uh, you, you can't you can't talk about a TV show without doing full like what what do yes. people know what do they not know? Um, and it's been six weeks, so you've had plenty of time to watch it. If not, mm-hmm. come back later. Go watch it. Come back later and listen to what we have to say about this. Because I think early on. Um, again, full spoilers, a couple weeks ago, I think maybe the first week, and we were like, oh, this is firing on all cylinders. I think it was the second week, because you were gone the first week. Um, but we came back, we're like, oh, this is great. It picked up right where it was. We are we are loving Loki Season 2. Mike, did that continue throughout the show for you? Man, the TVA is single-handedly the most interesting thing happening in the Marvel Universe, I might say, of all time. Uh, across all of the phases it, it's just doing so well and it's so interesting and i feel like it's so good just standalone on its own like you almost don't even need any superhero powered things happening and a lot of that doesn't happen in this show i mean yes like loki is like a god a wizard mm-hmm. whatever you want to call him but for the majority of this season and whenever they're in the tva they have like the powers on like lockdown there's power yeah. dampeners so really, you're just watching a really innovative, like sci-fi, uh, futuristic, m- mid-century yeah. modern, you know, TV show, yeah. and it's just really clever. I, you know, the per- performances, the the acting is great. I love the addition of like the new characters of Ob and leaning into some of these other like TVA agents as well. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, the TBA, uh, TB, to be decided. Jonathan Majors. Well, we don't, don't, don't touch, what, don't touch on that yet. Let's not get into we that. We don't Let's know what's that. happening. We don't know what's happening there, obviously. But I loved his performance as um, uh, what do they call his character? Victor again? Timely. Was, Victor Timely. Victor Timely. I loved Victor Timely. So yeah, everything is like popping off. It's great. I love it. What an amazing like finale. Like Chris, when was like when was the last time something Marvel Disney Plus related came across 
and I was texting you like, wait, what night of the week does this yeah. does this air? I got to make sure I catch this the second it's ready. Like the last the last two episodes or the last three or whatever, like I was on my couch, West Coast, 6 p.m., ready yeah. to go, ready to watch these because I was like hooked in. It's been a long time since anything Disney Plus has done that to me outside mm-hmm. of like maybe Andor. Yeah, so I, I agree. I think I think Loki Loki season two uh, continued the success and quality of Loki season one. And yeah. I would say from the beginning, they said that this is a two season show, right? Very much from from the beginning, even though it has different showrunners for season two. Season one, they were like, this is a two season thing. We know what we want to do with it, and having that vision, that ability to say this is the end and this is what we're working towards, really kept this tight and to to a point, didn't it? Like it really was a, it's a very tight show. They know what they're doing. I don't feel there's wasted episodes or wasted time, pun intended, uh, for this. But like you got, you know, um, if you look at all twelve episodes, it's literally just one big go, right? You can you can watch from start to finish here because literally episode one picks up where season one leaves off, and they just keep going, and it, it's really great. I, I I think I think Tom Hilson as an actor in the fourteen years he's been doing Marvel since you know. Thor one has been a, a treasure and seen his character evolve and transcend, you know, the different ones. And this character is obviously a variant Loki, right? Because he was brought from um, the battle of New York and watched his history as the other characters. So it's not the original Loki, but like seeing him evolve and be like, yes, I want, you know, I care about people now. I want to save my friends. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to take over, or be the king of anything. Uh, really, uh, he's like, I don't want people to admire me because of me leading them, kind of deal, and and it pays. I think that ultimately pays off in the end of the series with that. Uh, I I think the the my disappointment this season is the Renslayer slash um, uh, what's her name uh, Miss Minutes characters kind of got shafted. I think towards the end a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, they just didn't get enough time. But what can you do with six episodes and so many characters already? Uh, mm-hmm. They were the consequences of that. But this show, again, I think you and I have talked beautifully shot, beautifully designed, set decorated, right? All the mm-hmm. periods come together, um, you, you know, all the different scenes, the spaghettification effect, which is essentially the new dusting effect, if you will, for Marvel. Yeah. Uh, you're going to see that everywhere for a while. And one of the things, and we're, we'll talk about this at the end, uh, more towards the end of this this review here, is the Jonathan Majors as Victor Timely. He can play all Kang, He Who Remains, Victor Timely, all the other uh, council versions. And I don't see, like, I see him a little bit, but he can like mold into this other role so well that I don't see that it's just one dude playing all the roles. And um, we kind of see it there at the end when we get, you know, Victor Timely and He Who Remains in the last episode. I'm like, oh, I, f- I forget they're the same actor because they, they got different haircuts and they have different things. He even talks differently as Timely. So I'm like, this is he's a really good actor and, and, and yeah. hopefully like, you know, it's going to be a huge loss if, if things don't work out. Uh, but at the same time, I'm glad for what we got with him because he did such a good job at it. Uh, yeah. He, he's making big decisions and big choices with those characters. And I don't even care if they are not even like paying off. Like he commits to it either way. Like yeah. the, the stuttering for Victor timely at first got on my nerves a little bit, but I kind of, it grew on me a little bit, so I don't know if that's just the charm that's coming from mm-hmm. his performances. But yeah, it really, really worked for me. Yeah, uh, I, I, the, the emotional core. I mean, th- that's just storytelling in general, right? Whether you're telling a funny story, dramatic story, a scary story, you just have to empathize with the characters that you're seeing on screen. And they have really taken the character of Loki through an arc on this show for sure. He showed yeah. up as a spoiled prince brat that you know didn't care about anyone or anything uh and then he by the end of it it was like the end of scott pilgrim of congratulations you've earned the power of like friendship you know and (laughs) self-introspection like it was it's just it's just so great you know Mm -hmm. yeah exactly and and one of the things you know um this season it's hard to talk about without the end because everyone's talking about the end of the show right where Mm -hmm. loki literally sacrifices uh his his freedom his, to, to be with the, the people he, he now cares about to go be a true God, the God of time. Um, and, 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 and literally break, um, the infinite loop that is, uh, Victor, or I guess he who remains the, the one true timeline. He breaks it to create, um, his own and be the, and holds all those strings together and keeps everybody alive and watches over them. But it's a thankless job, right? Nobody knows he's doing it mm-hmm. at the end of the day. 
And um, it was cool to see, you know, he, he grew him, uh, he, he used his magic to give him a good suit at the end, right? A nice green suit with the horns that he always wanted. Uh, the Yggdrasil, the world tree visage, whenever you yeah. look at I mean, the, the timelines was great. The, the, the tableau of him at the end, finally in that gilded throne, holding just just existence together. Like, I don't know if that is from a comic book splash page but it is a hundred percent influenced from the vibes of just yeah. turning that page and just sting and all splayed out and just beautiful ink and color detail. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I really commend them for finding just that, that really visual. And then you pan out and you do get that, that tree visual as well. And I think they did something really, really smart. My, I think one of my favorite things about the final episode, and it was just not really like a throwaway line, but it was just a little bit of just, he was just like, Obi, if I wanted to learn everything about theoretical physics, how long would it take me? And he's just like, tell me how long. He's like, oh, it could, you know, it could Couple take, centuries. you know, like centuries. And, and he was just like, did you okay. like, basically, did you forget that like, I'm a God? And I, that actually, I think was really, really helpful because I think if you take a normal, like human being, right uh that has the uh, power of time travel right and maybe when they're in this like time travel state they're not aging right it's hard for me to imagine a normal human being having the patience and perseverance to go hundreds of years learning something and going in a cycle but since he is a god and has already lived so long like his perception of time is already different than maybe most human beings and just living as a god is also just different too. So I think that really pairs really well because I kept thinking about that when he grabbed all of the branches and trees like to sit down because I was like, oh yeah, if he if he has the ability to just dedicate him hundreds of years to himself of just trying to learn theoretical physics, like yeah, I can actually see him to manage to do this. Maybe yeah. not forever, but you know, I think uh, um, I don't know if. Um, uh, hunt, uh, if B15 said this or it, it was somebody else or if it was Sylvie of like oh you know he's giving us he's giving us a chance now it, so yeah. I loved that like idea of like sacrifice and everything it was just the, the visuals like so cool man like I don't know if we're supposed to interpret that that tree literally or figuratively well I think I think, know, I think it's I think it's a uh, it could be both like right it's called the world tree you know, they've already talked about Yggdrasil and, like, the legends of, you know, the, the realms. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's bigger now, like, literally. Because cause it's – what is cool about the last episode, well, you know, every every episode is great. But the last episode is, like, he he's controlled time slipping. They, they even reversed the Marvel intro for us, right? Like, that was really fun um, to, to do it in reverse. And he's like, okay, we have to – we have to do this, and he's like played through hundreds, if not thousands, of variations of timely failing to get out there as fast as he could, right? So like, it's fun to see him kind of like, yes, you're do- you're doing a great job. Like he's sitting there, like I I don't know, like I guess subconsciously just giving him confidence <laughs> the whole yeah. time, and they're like it's failing, and then he has to. He's like, okay, this wasn't. I have to go back farther, and then we get to see him you know, spar with Sylvie hundreds of times, you know, figuratively again, um, to, to not kill he who makes it. And then he finds out, Hey, actually, you know, the, 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 the loom is a fail safe, right. To keep the one true timeline, no matter what, the one true timeline will always be there. If, if, it, if this busts, guess what? Everything else will get pruned kind of deal. Yeah. And it'll remain. And, his- and that was really fun. And then to see him like, Oh, to, I have to break this now in my own way was, was really, yeah. Compelling. And I really love to see his powers grow towards the end as well. You know, not only did he learn to control his time slipping, but then he also was able just to control time in general. He was able to pause it himself and reverse it. So yeah, he basically became this god of time and he put the burden on top of himself and it's just great. So you were talking about him trying to, you know, uh, creatively figure out like, how am I going to uh, get this bridge scene, um, you know, popping off? And I just have to say, I am absolutely in love with those. I, I'm calling them spacesuits because that's the, the the most analogous thing, I think. I love how big and puffy they are. I love the gigantic corrugated tube that comes off mm-hmm. of the back of them. I, I am just in love with the visual. And this is my call to sideshow collectibles or hot toys, whoever needs to hear this. I want, I want this highly detailed, like, one-sixth scale figure or whatever it's got to be it's just so 
cool. And I love that we just got to see more and more and more of it towards the yeah. end because he just had to run this scenario over and over. It was, yeah. it was just great. He's like, don't set it down. It'll fall off. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. Now, what did I what did I tell you? Um, yeah. yeah, it was just it was just so cool. Yeah, it's, it's really Every, fun. Everything about I mean, if I if I am in charge of Marvel, if I'm sitting over there watching the performance and critical review and story elements of all of my different properties going, uh, not unlike the characters in this show, looking at those monitors of the timelines and trying to figure out where the thing is going. Like it, it, to me, it, the the obvious answer is here is like you pivot the entire Marvel universe around like the TVA. It's the most. It makes the most sense. It's the most interesting thing. I, it's the easiest way to kind of pivot into this like quantum universal branching I, type of it's, stuff. We've already talked about it. it 100. It, this is in Deadpool three already. You don't you don't have to worry about it. However, I disagree. When they lean too much on one thing, that's where Marvel gets screwed over every time like you focus on one thing too much is going to fail and this is this is a great time to talk about um jonathan majors right he remains victor timely kang the council of of kings um right as an actor um and this is where i'm going to point that art that variety article last week that says oh uh with the ending season of loki the last episode of loki they they've screwed themselves they're fucked because they didn't write themselves out of this actor well after watching this mike they have every absolute right to get rid of that. Uh, if, if if Jonathan Majors is found guilty and they don't want to hire him, this this episode can wipe him clean and put a new person in that, that role, right? Absolutely. Because the person at the end of time is Loki. He's controlling the time. Well, you can say, well, guess what? The new variants of Kang look different somehow because because they've some, something's happened. Yeah. So, I, I don't even think they even need to visually acknowledge uh, confirm it. Yeah. that they changed. You just do like a typical Hollywood recast. The audience is smart enough to know that sometimes this I, just happens. I don't know. even I don't even don't do a recast. I I still think the best thing to do is write him in as a character but don't tell him tell anyone who that is. That's who that is at the end. And then they unveil mm-hmm. at the end. That's your post credit scene, right? Like, oh, you know, come to find out the whole time this person is now a, a king variant, um, and that's what and that's what he looks like going forward. At the yeah, they could do something like but that. like so, but so, like so, I, I, I again I think the ending sets us up for a clean slate for that role if it is Jonathan Majors or isn't I, absolutely mm-hmm. without any doubt they could literally recast him and just do it and no one would know and no yeah, one would I, care. I think this really brings me into the the big thing that I wanted to talk about with this this review, and I uh, I briefly hinted and talked about it when we were reviewing Captain Marvel. No, not Captain Marvel. The Marvels. The Marvels. In, in our other episode, where uh, we're we're really building to something here in the Marvel universe, right? There there's different realities. There's different branch timelines. There's different multiverses, uh, right? We got a lot of different things going on within the MCU. But there doesn't seem to be an agreed upon definition of what any of this stuff is. It's still really, really messy. Uh, Kind of, uh, it feels like every director or writer is kind of taking a different approach to it. And maybe Marvel is just kind of sitting back and waiting for one to solidify and make the most sense. Because when you watch Loki season one and season two, um, they might say the word multiverse at some point in time but they are 100 percent leaning into the the structure of timelines like this is all about branching timelines alternate realities maybe they'll they'll say that they talk about variants but this is all very time focused like miss minutes is a literal clock ai that you know that controls everything in the tva so this is all very time focused which to me, in my head, I hook back into um, Endgame when uh, Bruce Banner goes back, talks to um, Tilda Swinton. Uh, they have the outer body experience, and she's literally doing the same visual of branching timelines with her finger in the air that matches up pretty one to one with the visuals that we're seeing in Loki, right? So to me, that makes the most sense there. Let's move forward with 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 that idea that there's these branching timelines but then when you get into something like doctor strange and the multiverse of madness and i don't remember exactly how everything was functioning at the end of what if season one and i guess you can even throw that out if it's if it's not canon right but they're leaning into more of the idea of like literally anything is possible because the multiverse is an an is an is an infinity type of thing so you could have a universe where 
maybe the only difference is that uh, Loki got a ha- got a hold of the Tesseract and he moved away. Or you you could theoretically have a totally different universe where everyone is like slug monsters, you know, right? So it's like there's no agreed upon definition of how we're supposed to interpret or per- perceive a multiverse because... I like the idea of where Loki's taking it, where we have different branching timelines, there's different variants. It feels very, it still feels very earthbound, right? So it roots it a little bit more. Like, like as an audience, like at some point in time, like, are we supposed to try to define what a multiversal, like Proxima Nova looks like? Mm-hmm. Not only is it already an alien planet that we don't know much about, but there's a multiversal version of that planet with a whole different version of it. So I I I would I need that to be solidified at, at at some point in time because like is literally anything possible at any time in another multiverse or is the multiverse just kind of like a a different version of our branch timeline and they they have not really given me a funnel of which way I'm supposed to. Yeah, I, I think I think it's both, and I think as as you know when we got the Infinity Stones right early on, like they they're gonna have to set those rules in place as we kind of go forward. Um, and, and like you mentioned, top, st- stamp down kind of what those rules are. Because I think multiverses and timelines can be the same thing. Um, so branching timelines could be a branching timeline in the, the past. Again, uh, imagine um, a, a change in the weather in prehistoric times causes the what what you mentioned the, the the planet full of slug like versions of us right or al- mm. like the alligator versions or or something and then you know branching time like you know branching time is now creating different universes so it's like it's an infinite number of things and then no they haven't touched on it but they they do refer to them as you know again uh, realms universes and uh, timelines so I I think timelines and multiverses to me are the same but you have to think about like timelines branching like it's not just always going forward. You can go backwards and branch from there. Right. And create bigger, like your tree is always getting bigger towards the bottom. Um, yeah, as you kind of get down there. So, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a whole nother, uh, question too, that we've brought up before, like the different realms, like, is there a multiversal version of that place that Shang-Chi goes to in his yeah. movie? Right. Or is that like its own isolated thing and multiversal versions of that, yeah. you know, can't it exist. It, it's, it's, well, it's just such a big, heady topic that I feel like you you really got to sit down and really put down a piece of graph paper, right, and lay out how you're going to tell the story. Because uh, if you watch that uh, South Park special, uh, Enter the Panderverse or whatever, they make a lot of jokes in it about how people are exhausted and tired of multiverses already. Uh, so, And I disagree. I think, I think if done well, they are not. But, but exactly because I, I think of the, the most effective one which is everything everywhere all at once a, a nice contained story they laid out the rules of how the multiverse works but they really make you care just about these specific characters and their journey through the different universes all of the other people these other infinite versions don't matter it's all about the specific character that we're following through it but now Marvel is starting to introduce other characters from different multiverses. So like if they introduce us to um, a new character from a different multiverse, like, uh, I don't know, just for example, let's say uh, Captain Carter survived her altercation and she was still out there in existence. Like, I do. I, am I supposed to care about her? She's from mm-hmm. a total another universe. Right. Like, yeah, I feel like I, I shouldn't have to emotionally carry the weight I, of these characters. And I also <laughs> think you're you're setting up a lot of expectations for things that haven't happened, and you're 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 creating events that aren't there yet. So let's see what they do with the movies first, and see if, if it even comes up to that. Um, but I, I think you know, they, again, to be successful, to get to Kang Dynasty, to get to Secret Wars, they need to set that down right a little bit. Like realms, I can I can get 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 around because like they're just hidden, maybe in partial like. We just don't see them in our universe. Like they're there, running in, in tandem. We just don't see them. But like multiverse and timelines, I to me they are one and the same. Um, a new a new dimension creates it, and timelines can branch off from that. So it's like you have just huge like, and you're kind of like a tree, right? Like you have the base, and then it just starts branching. Those branches branch, but like you have an entire one one limb over there is the ultimate universe. One limb over here is the main universe. Another one over here is like a steampunk universe, kind of right. And then there's timelines within those even, but um, the the idea is that it can get infinite is is overwhelming at the end of the day. But I I do believe um, I've been reading still through the Marvel Universe timeline book, 
and they've been explaining it a little bit by a little bit, but that's farther down the book because I haven't got to the Loki yet. So, mm-hmm. um, or Avengers. So we'll, we'll talk about it. But overall, I think with the rules they have set up and the, everything they've done in here, the show is a nicely contained show and ends gives a wonderful ending. Uh, if we never see Loki again, which I doubt we will probably see him in secret wars. Um, I think this is a great send off for that character. If we never see him again, he he came and did what he wanted to do. Um, I'm sad that it's not a big screen version of it, uh, right? But I think him getting his own two season show, twelve episodes, is very very well done. At the end of the day, it it is kind of hard to imagine that we don't see these characters again. I mean, we see uh, Ren Slayer in that like garbage dump dimension with, with where, the, yeah. where the yeah the monster is supposed to come eat her but you know the last thing we end on she has a very like kind of perseverance painted all over her face like she's not gonna let this thing take her down and you know we've seen her do the impossible so i could see her surviving that and coming back uh we see the tva trying to like right the ship you know uh mobius you know we we got you know we we wrapped up his arc yeah. a little bit right but i feel like you know does he pop up in uh, Deadpool three? I mean, that would be that's I mean, that the would rumor. Be pretty cool. That's, that's I'd like to see. Rumor, yeah. I'd like to see that. So yeah, it is hard to imagine that all of this is uh, wrapped up. I want to see them again. Uh, yeah. We definitely got to see Tom Hiddleston again. Yeah, uh, I, I think he, if he gets one more, the last time we see it. Yeah, yeah, I think if he gets one more where where he 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 saves all of, all of time by merging everything into one timeline going forward, the reboot, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think that would be be great, but yeah. I, overall, I think there's some like you mentioned some good things set up here. The TVA exists. They've explicitly stated that he who remains and his variants do not know who they are or what they're doing yet, so they can operate, you know, in in the background uh, and build an army to take him down. Right? That's what we've talked about rumored wise for the the mm-hmm. other shows. So I think that kind of lines up. I think I think we'll get more of them, but. Um, you know, at at the end of the day, like this has been a really good stepping stone forward, but also a good, hey, you know, Loki, you 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 have come a long way from your, you know, trying to kill your father in in the first movie <laughs> because you found out you were adopted. So, mm-hmm. uh, also, uh, fun fact before we end, um, Loki came out the season five the same day Marvel's uh, debuted, and um, his wife is actually the ca- the actor who, who played Darben in the Marvels. So they're the only married couple to have Marvel debuts, uh, properties released, new properties released on the same day. So, what a night. What a night for them. I wonder what they did. Probably. <laughs> did they uh, go out to dinner? <laughs> I don't know. If, if, if maybe maybe they sent her, maybe they sent them out for press stuff because the actor strike was over. <laughs> so they were like, yeah. hey, can you get in the studio real fast? We got we to gotta film something. But um, yeah, good, good for them. So yeah. Um, anything else, Mike, on Loki? I, th- I think uh, everyone yeah. should watch it. I, th- I think everyone I mean, should not skip this show on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, between uh, Loki, the TVA, and uh, Kamala Khan, uh, easily the best things happening right now. Yeah, all on Disney Plus. Mike, if people want to know more about what you're doing, what you're up to, where can they find you at? Well, they can find my web comics at liferewardsrisk.com. Chris, if people want to catch you, where are you? you can find me on Instagram, Valdan V uh, Valdan eighty seven V A L D A N, or Video Game Systems of the same name. If people know more about our show, listen to our the Marvel's review or get ready for our upcoming uh, Aquaman and Lost King review or just our regular weekly episode that we do every week. Where can they find all that stuff at? Yeah. If you want to get trapped in our translucent shrinking torture box, uh, the best place to find that is at superhero slate, uh, com. Uh, we are on Apple podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts. We love our fans. What did you think of Loki? What did you think of the Marvels? Let us know. We love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll be here every week, folks. That's right. We 